Hi, Mark. Uh, a great start to the season, but I want to talk about what could be a potential headache for you now, the African Cup of Nations. And obviously, there's a few players within your squad that could be involved in that. Uh, the goalie, Singh, Dien, Ilias, Chair and Osman Kaike. But especially a goalkeeper, if Singh is involved with the Senegal national team, to lose your goalkeeper for an extensive period of time. And then obviously with the African Cup of Nations being held in Africa with the whole issues of quarantine and, and everything surrounding like that. Will that be a massive headache for you? Will that be a massive period of instability, uh, losing a goalkeeper as a foundation for a back four under the defence? Yeah. Ask me one on geography, Jim, if you would do, please. Ask me one on geography, and that's a, that's a very tough question. It is a major problem for many, many clubs. You're dead right. Your players are disappearing for weeks on end. Um, it's how they come back. And it's it's not just the period of the tournament. It's the lead-up. It's the post-period. It's a real issue. Full stop. Is there an obvious answer? No. Is it an opportunity for other players to step in? Yes. You've got to make sure you have the the depth in your squad to deal with that situation, Jim. But there's no there's no obvious answer. At the highest level, you're losing players, um, and it's um, it's a problem that's going to pose. You know, clubs pay wages and all the rest of it. Players want to play international football, but this is a world game now. It's where we are, and you have to have the strength and depth to deal with it. But on the other side of that, with the COVID situation and the financial implications of the COVID situation. Um, Teams outside the Premier League, for example, it's an issue. There's no doubt, Jim. So, very good question. Thank you for that curveball early on. And uh, I hope I've answered it the best way I can. Yeah. Are you amazed at the timing of the competition? It's only like a few weeks into the season as well. Are you amazed that it's not being held maybe earlier on in the summer? Normally, the African Nations is held around the February period, but right bang, right at the start of the season, four or five games into the season, players are just settling in with their clubs and all of a sudden they've been told they need to leave their clubs for the best part of over a month or so. It's really difficult, Jim. I'm not sure when's a good time because the fact is it involves, you know, when, when players go away now, for certain teams, there's so much travelling involved. You know, when you're flying the other side of the world, uh, sometimes they're coming back and, and different destinations. You're not sure about the travel situation, not sure about the, the food, training facilities, all the rest of the stuff. Not in any derogatory way to the association, far from it, just the nature of the games now. So it, it's a, it, you know, when, when, whenever these boys go, it's a problem. They're missing something here. Um, and, and that's a simple fact of it, Jim. It's a, it is the world game we're now involved in. You know, it'll keep on getting worse, I think. You know, and I, I see more demands for more games. And these players, I said to you last week, these players will break sooner or later. You just, they just can't keep on travelling, training, playing, travelling, playing, training without implications and consequences. Um, so all we can do is try and have the squad depth to deal with it, try and recognise the problems down the line uh, and have plans in place to deal with it. But it'll always be a, a difficult situation, Jim. It's just the nature of it right now. And Mark, last one on the African uh, Nations as well. I'm just looking through your squad there. Is it correct to say that you lose three players? You lose one, Osman to Syria, Leon, uh, Singh to Senegal, and Elias Chair to Morocco. Is there anyone else that you lose? No, no don't. I'm depressed enough as it is, Jim. Don't make me any worse now. <laughs> and I suppose, Mark, uh, I'll bring you on now to, to Bournemouth. Um, I suppose going into this game, uh, look, looking at the table, fourth and fifth, I suppose... Looking into Boersmouth, Boersmouth are where they want to be. Obviously, you're impressed with the start of the season. In this type of uh, a game, you really like to play attack in football. Boersmouth like to play attack in sort of football. So do you see a sort of in to end sort of an encounter if you're as neutral looking on? Is that the way you see the game going if you were looking at it from a neutral perspective? Not really, James. I think if you look like that, it becomes a youth game. It becomes a, you, know, you, you, you attack, we attack, you attack. It, it can't be that way. You've got to be defensively resilient. You've got to be solid. You've got to be tactically organised. You've got to recognise that it can be two set pieces that open you up, you know, as opposed to attacking open play. You've got to go there and you've got to try and impose yourself on the game. Uh, and we know that Bournemouth will, will, will look to dominate possession and the football. We'll look to do the same. It's about good players making good decisions and the game will be won by, by the best players making the best decisions, Jim. Simple as that. So I think it'd be a good game of football. You know, it won't be just this open free-for-all. It'd be a very good game of football, I hope. Uh, and the players have got to relish it. It's a nice playing surface, good evening, good, good stadium, tight, good atmosphere. We've sold our away allocation. The QPR fans have been outstanding. We have to see it as an opportunity. Every game is an opportunity, Jim, to go there 
and and cement your reputation and I keep improving your reputation and to show you can go to places like Bournemouth where many would expect them to win this game tomorrow night and to go there and impose ourselves and, and give a really good display. As was well Mark, you mentioned a bit of disappointment about the three three all draw with a Reading not not winning it. But were you sort of pleased with the resolve when you went three one down within two minutes you were able to bring it back to three two to respond to that sort of blow straight away and obviously that gave you the opportunity the platform then to rescue something out of the game but to concede three goals to one player was that a bit of disappointment as well yeah a bit of disappointment goals that were easily avoidable you know the first goal easily avoidable they hadn't had any they hadn't even got into a defensive 30 almost and we dominated the game completely um and we give away a really soft goal one all at half time we should have been up jim and then two really soft goals, really, really soft goals. Uh, and that's, I think, the players' resolve was to respond to it. There was no there was no just sitting there and giving up the three points. There was an immediate reaction. We played forward. We spoke all week about switching play against Reading and getting crosses in the box. We felt there was a, that was a weak point for them. Um, and we started doing that. And balls go across the box. You had Chrissy Willock, the overhead shot. You know, Albert then puts it just wide. We looked dangerous when we did it, but it's a great resolve and it's a real depth of character in the squad as well, Jim. You know, you, know, you saw that against Barnsley, um, you saw against Coventry, Middlesbrough away down to ten men for forty minutes. You're seeing, you know, consistent signs of good character and desire. But we've got to recognise we can't find ourselves three one down or two down at Barnsley to suddenly start playing like that. Cheers, Mark. Uh, no more African Cup nations uh, Thank questions. You very much. Speak about that next year, Jim. Maybe. Yeah. Cheers, Jim. Thanks very much. Ian, over to you.